Welcome everyone. Thanks a lot for tuning in. I'm Shivani Gupta, and joining me is none other than Sanya Mirza to talk about her glorious career, which is almost coming to an end. Sanya, we discussed this when you joined us at the CNN IBN uh, Indian of the Year Awards last year, a couple of months ago. Uh, since then, you've played your final Grand Slam at the Australian Open. For those who don't know, Sanya actually sent me this T-shirt from the Australian Open, uh, so I'm wearing this for this very special interaction. um you know we saw your speech uh, after your final match and it was almost a fairy tale retirement from grand slams where you made it to the finals with in mixed doubles with none other than rohan bopanna one of your oldest uh, friends and uh, partners and it was a very emotional moment for you could you describe to us what that moment was like um well i think that I was holding on to so many emotions for those two weeks that everything kind of came out together, and I think it would probably come out anyway at whatever time my Grand Slam was going to be over. But it just yeah. happened to be in front of the whole world and in the final. So I mean, I'm so glad, right? That happened because if I had to write a story uh, where mm -hmm. I would like to finish. my career and where i would like to finish playing it would be on one of the biggest courts of the world um you know and playing in a big final so for me it was a dream um finish and it was obviously very special because it was in australia as well but uh for so many reasons my i mean my son was there my parents were there it was with rohan who was my first ever mixed doubles partner 22 years ago which is crazy when i say those numbers in my head actually now you know i you don't realize how where those 22 years have gone time just kind of flew by and um, yeah so there was so much in my head and and that's why i started by saying it's all happy emotions because the emotions were actually really really happy satisfied full of gratitude gratefulness it was all that and and yeah mm. a little bit of just sadness to leave and know that i'm never going to come back um and compete in a grand slam final again you know so um but yeah mostly it was all happy and it, i was just holding on and holding in for two weeks so i kind of uh, just let it all go you didn't you don't cry in public very easily so that is something if you that, that just tells you how special this moment was i did see a picture that one of your uh, family showed to me uh, behind the scenes when you entered i think the uh, the lounge the players locker room uh, after the final and i think uh, you were a little bit teary then as well they had some was, bouquets I and was, gifts for you i was not a little bit teary i was bawling actually and like <laughs> i didn't for for once i didn't care who was there and how many people and everybody was a little shocked i think as to what to do um because everybody was standing around me and i just i couldn't hold it in anymore um mm. and i just felt like you know i needed that reason it was almost like a 18 year release it was not just a two week release that happened in those moments but um yeah uh it's been an amazing journey and it has been truly truly special um to be able to share that with my family to share that with some of my best friends um to share the court with one of my closest friends who also yeah. happens to be indian which is really special for both of us to be there at that if i if i'm not wrong you were very clear that you wanted to play the final grand slam of your life with an indian isn't it that's why rohan bopanna well i mean there is not many indians that i can choose from so yeah it was rohan by choice but also it would have probably been rohan anyway because you know yeah. he is like i said he is one of my best friends on and off the court mm. and and uh, uh we just go such a long way back you know but um i think it is very special because you know actually i wanted to play with him at us open and that that didn't happen because i hurt my elbow um and even that time i said oh ron you want to play and he's like okay we'll play and then mm -hmm. you know i was like ro i can't play you got to find someone else and then we just in december i just happened to pass it because i actually wasn't sure how good or bad my body will be so i was it was very last minute i was still waiting to see and then you know when they were here for training i just said ro you want to play australia since it's my last and he was like yeah sure and i mean That's what better way i we've actually never played a final together you know we yes. so yeah. which was amazing that we were able to do that so Yeah, absolutely. At this age and the numbers that you were talking about, so it's such a grand finale to your Grand Slam career. Of course, you will play a couple of more tournaments, and your final Swan Song tournament will be in Dubai, which is also home for you. I'll come to that in just a bit. But Sanya, I did want to ask you, and you know, we've spoken a few times about this. 
uh, you're known for your ferocious forehand. That's something that everybody remembers about you. You're known as a fearless athlete, especially a female athlete who was coming up at a time when you were, and you were very fearless uh, with the way you handled everything and expressed yourself. Uh, you're also known as a fighter. You know, you fought a lot of odds off the court, on court. You came back after becoming a mother. I do want to ask you today. I've asked you a lot of things about your favorite partnerships and all of that, but how would you like to be remembered? I would like to be remembered as a person who fought for uh, what she believed was right, who fought against the odds. Um, because, yeah, I mean, of course, I would like to be remembered as someone who was able to achieve everything that I did and being number one in the world and winning grandsons. And of course, all those all those things on the tennis court. But I just feel like today I've reached a stage in my life where uh, it's not just about uh, winning tennis matches and hitting tennis balls. It's much larger than that. And when you ask me, what I would like to be remembered as, I would like to be remembered as a very good tennis player who also stood her ground when it mattered, who also um, fought against a lot of odds um, on and off the court. Um, and for someone who uh, truly tried to stay as authentic as possible, um, you know, and, and I, I, no, I'm going to lie if I say I was 100% authentic all the time because it's just not possible in front of the public eye. But as authentic as possible and and that is something that i strive for to try and be the, the truest self um and to try and uh, be a good example in many ways to be able to inspire young girls young boys young mothers who want to uh, you know dream and fulfill their dreams and know that you can do it you know there are people who have done it and you can be one of those people you know your life just does not end because you have a baby and, and you have more responsibilities. It's actually just the beginning of, of, of a new chapter. So I want to be remembered for all those things as well, mm. as um, as well as being, um, you I know, someone you who was able to, yeah, someone who was able mm. to achieve the things that I did and, and to be number one in the world. Not many people get to say that. So, yeah, I'm very proud of those things. But I'm also proud of the way I've been able to stay true to myself. You've inspired a lot, uh, a, a lot of people, you know, a lot of girls, especially. So, you know, that's one big thing that Sanya Mirza's career is also always going to be known for, because before you, there weren't many females who had done what the, you have done uh, in sport in general for India and, of course, in tennis particularly. And you must be very, very aware of just how many women, how many young girls you've inspired to be Sanya Mirza or to be like Sanya Mirza in whatever field they choose. I think that is very important because I think that, you know, 30 years ago when I, I, I and my family dreamt of, of all these things and playing Grand Slams and winning them, though winning was so far ahead of the dream, it was just about getting there, you know, at that point. Yeah. Um, when we dreamt about all this, people used to actually laugh at us and you know that, I mean, obviously, you know, you, you've been around our family and they used to think that we're crazy. And mm. yeah, maybe we were a little crazy to have a crazy yes. dream, you know. <laughs> so that is that is something that you have to be. You have to, to achieve amazing and great things. You have to be a little, little crazy. And yes. crazy is not always bad. You can be, you mm. know, you can believe in yourself. And my parents did, and they believed in me and my abilities and my talent when no one else did. So I mm. think that for me, um, it is very important to put that out that whoever. And whatever you do in your life, never let anyone tell you that you can't do it. Because as young girls, we are told more often than not that we can't do something than that we can do, right? I mean, mm. even you will say yes to that. Every every young girl will tell you. Because the minute a young yeah. girl chooses a profession that is outside of the box, she's told that, but are you crazy? Why do you want to do that? Like, why don't mm. you just do what normal people are supposed to do culturally or whatever? So the fact is that I think that that's why I keep saying, even if I've inspired one young girl, one young mother, one young child to dare to dream, then I think that my job is my job has been fulfilled for what I've been placed here for. Can I ask you, uh, you know, when you were at the Australian Open, you talked a lot about how the Australian Open is extremely special for you because that third round appearance versus Serena Williams really made you the star and, you know, made the world look up and took uh, uh, take notice of Sanya Mirza and her forehand especially. Uh, of course, you won at the Australian Open before and then, of course, you were in the mixed doubles final as well. Uh, 
I remember a few other moments from your career which possibly were extremely special similarly but I want to ask you when you look back what is that one moment that stands out Um in Australia or like anywhere anywhere Just in the world Generally yeah generally uh, from your career top Well moment. I mean I I think I'm fortunate enough to say that I've had so many such moments that it's very difficult yeah. for me to say oh my god this is the one moment that I feel has defined um you know me and and it really has like I'm like okay that one match it was never like that it's been you know whether it was becoming number 1 in the world whether mm-hmm. it was um winning my first medal when I was 15 years old for yeah. India you know I mean those yeah. memories and I may have been I mean that was a bronze medal but I went on to win golds at Asian games many many medals at Asian games many years yeah. after that but the feeling of winning that first ones always stands out you know because you know what it has taken you for you to get there and to be able to and because after you win the first it's very easy for people to believe in you mm-hmm. it's much harder for people to believe in you when you've not gotten that first so and and for yourself sometimes you know and for yourself sometimes you need that first one so th- that one was very special for me for me obviously winning wimbledon was extremely special so like i said it's very difficult for me to be like okay this was the moment that you know I, when i look back now um you know but I, also losing to serena because that kind of defined me and defined my entire career um mm. that's where it kind of like people took notice and started believing that we can as indians compete against the best in the world um mm-hmm. you know and 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 you don't have to have a certain path uh, you can create your own path which i was fortunately and by the grace of god able to do yeah of course i can add to that list top 30 in the world for the first time an indian woman <laughs> getting there world number 1 uh, six grand slams many more grand slam finals and a whole host of other things you know uh, wta year end trophies and more uh but uh, finally i want to ask you uh, what is post retirement life for sanya going to be like you are a mother you have a family so of course that's going to be very big part of your life maybe more kids i don't know but otherwise as a person as a human per- as a human being who's you know been getting up at 6 am in the morning and working so hard physically all her life what is that one thing you look forward to doing and what is post retirement like uh, life for sanya going to be like I mean I actually still have to wake up at 6:30 in the morning because now <laughs> my son goes to school so that has not changed that stays mm. um but um I'm actually looking forward to a little bit of a calm I mean I need to find my calm a little bit and I feel I feel the need to do that and I feel um yeah I just need to do different things and not travel as much i mean i still want mm. to travel so those are the things that I want to do I've started some academies and I've I've started some back end work I'm into a couple of more businesses that i you know that i want to get into further once i stop so i am i am still busy it's just i just want it to be a little quieter that's all <laughs> well it will be quiet uh, naturally because uh, the kind of uh, noise and the kind of impact your career has made i don't think there is a parallel story to that i don't think that anybody else can say that they've had quite the career that sanya mirza has had indian or otherwise because your story is so much larger than the tennis court itself it's a lot more things added on to it and everything around it uh, and you know i've been lucky to interact with you and your family and one thing that always stands out is that good or bad you roll with it you laugh through it and yeah. that is something also something that you need to kind of you know do this otherwise it's no, not I think, possible to do no that. i think that and and i think that people actually don't realize because maybe i sometimes come off a little standoffish but i think that for me humor is a very big part of my life and yes. it gets me through a lot um mm. it gets me through good and it gets me through bad and, and we take as a family we take everything with with a smile and and that's literally how we are and that's what we've been taught and it's actually makes life it does make life a little bit easier you know even in those tough moments um but i just want to say like before we go that it's been an absolute privilege to to represent our country to represent everybody to represent you all at that stage being the first woman to be able to do the things that i was able to do and it's been an absolute honor and a privilege and and that's the part i'm going to probably 
miss the most. Um, I still think that I can represent the country in different ways. Um, but I don't think that it's going to happen on the tennis court again. And, and that is where I am truly myself on the tennis court and mm. winning and, and competing. And yeah, so I just want to say it's been an absolute honor for the last 20 over over 20 years to be able to do that. Well, you've been a fierce competitor and an absolute role model, a great ambassador for the country and the sport. The world recognizes that. I want to wish you uh, and your family at the end of a glorious career, because obviously Thank it takes you. a lot of effort from your family to, to get you to where you have achieved everything that you have. Um, and all the best, uh, all the best uh, for the next couple of tournaments that are coming up. We, I hope to thank chat up you. with you after the final tournament as well. Thank May you, you end see on you, a high. See and you thanks, guys. See you on the other thanks side. Thanks a lot for speaking to us. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Bye. Goodbye.